Hi everyone, welcome back to the Coding Game channel. Today we're welcoming Valentin. Uh, Valentin, can you introduce yourself a bit? Hi everyone, I'm a full stack developer at Coding Game uh, for about five years now. Okay, and what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna do some uh, code golf in JavaScript. It's a, a programming exercise where you have to, to write uh, as few characters as possible to solve a problem, and you have to, you, to use uh, a few tricks, a few language tricks that you don't use in your everyday life and that you shouldn't use in your everyday life because they are very ugly. Well, uh, let's get started. So here we are in the waiting room of the Clash of Code, which is the challenge we're gonna do today, which already includes uh, the part where you do the shortest mode, so the shortest code as possible. So here we are on the Clash of Code platform, where we have four parts of the editor. So here on the top left, we have the problem statement, which we're gonna get to uh, in a few seconds. Here we have the editor part, so where you actually type your code, and then uh, we have here at the bottom right, we have the test cases that we have to validate uh, in order to get the most points as possible. And then on the bottom left, you have the updated scoreboard where you can see how the competitors are doing. So what it tells us is uh, we have a spaceship that we have to fill up with fuel in uh, less than some amount of time, which is given in the variable T. We have also the capacity of our fuel tank in liters and the rate at which we can put fuel inside the tank, uh, which is R in liters per second. And so we have to tell whether it's possible or not to fill up the tank in less than t seconds given those input variables. So it's a fairly simple uh, formula. You have c liters and you have r uh, liters per second. So the number of seconds that you use is r uh, over c. And so that's the, total, that's the total time yeah. it takes to, to fill the tank. So if this R over C is uh, greater, is than, greater T. than T, uh, it means uh, it's not possible. So it's only like you divide R by C. And we check if this is uh, over T. Nice. Right. Well, let's let's go. So let's <laughs> go. We have uh, some code that is provided by default. We are obviously going to erase the commands and uh, reduce the variable declarations like var const are uh, not necessary in JavaScript because every variable declared without this is going to be global. So here okay. on the bottom right, we can see already you're reducing your code size. So we're currently at 127 characters. Uh, how low do you think we can go? As as it is now, we're going to be like 50. We can replace all the parsings with plus, which is a way to transform a string into a, a number in JavaScript. So you're using implicit casts? I'm not sure if it's called implicit cast, but yeah, I, I think so. And also structure the, the variables to, to directly have the first, the second, and the third elements of the array that was split. Right, so now we've removed the parse int and we've also removed uh, the use for uh, an external variable. We can solve the problem, which is uh, try to see if you can fill the spaceship within the given time. So the logic is we have a capacity of C liters divided by R liters per second. So this gives you the total time that you will need to fill up the spaceship, right? Yeah. Okay. And if this is, uh, we can say yes. So we can do ternary. So now we're running all test cases. Well. Well so played. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, at the end, we're gonna remove all the spaces that are not needed. It's just more readable to solve the problem first and then optimize the characters. So we can reduce all the white space, which is unnecessary. You have also, uh, I see the variable name, okay, yeah. which you could reduce I, a bit as well. I don't well. need this variable, so I'm gonna oh, yeah. inline it directly. That's a kind of trick that you should use everywhere. For the read line, uh, if you use it multiple times, you can declare a, a variable uh, equal to read line and use that variable like r, for example, and just call r and parentheses. Another trick, when you call a method, you can use tagged templates. Uh, instead of calling split, you can directly use like split and this. You can use print, which is an old function that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that deprecated. Was used, that's deprecated, but <laughs> It's still in some old code. So now you can uh, so now you can use print only on coding game, but and, yeah, yeah. and I guess that's only used for yeah. a, a hardcore code golf yeah, yeah. Uh, users, yeah, right? That's because they they, ch they changed the, the the engine that they use to run uh, JavaScript. And uh, I'm not sure if you can optimize this. We could reverse the condition to win one character and use no and yes. Then. Because now you have the equal that disappears so yeah. when you flip the condition, right? And another thing, yeah. So I think we are okay now. I don't see any better way to do this right now, so we can submit. And so now we get 100%. So, well, in Code Golf, you still have to complete the test cases, so you will still be rated first on your score, but it should be always 100% if you're trying to win. Then on the number of characters. And in case of a tie, you will uh, be counted by duration, because, well, if you submit it first, you deserve to win uh, yeah. when it's a tie in the, the number of characters. Wanna do another? 
Yeah, sure. Let's go. Oh, nice. It's another short one. We receive a square grid which contains only numbers. Every cell in the grid is either 1 or 7, and there are exactly C cells uh, that are equal to 1. We have to find the sum of all numbers that are not 1. So if I understand correctly, we have to sum the 7 in the grid, which is equal to like 7 times the number of, of cells that are not 1. So here, what this example tells us is that we have exactly 4 cells that are equal to 1. We can see them right here. There's 4 of them. And the grid is 3 by 3. And then the rest, the remaining three lines, are the grid that we're gonna do computations on. And here, the total sum, so we have five cells that have not a one inside, and so that's the total sum of 35. So well, um, here I'm seeing already uh, quite a few tricks that we can yeah. implement. Wanna show us? Yeah, sure. Well, the first thing uh, is that we don't need to read the grid at all, because we already have the, the size of the grid and the number of cells that are equal to seven because it's the number of cells in the grid minus the number of cells that are equal to one. So we don't need to even read the input at all. And so we can print the output without even reading all the lines? Yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. We don't need to read everything. Can we remove all the keywords that are not useful? We can replace the parsint with plus like we did before. Can we remove the, the semicolons because they are not necessary in JavaScript except in very specific situations. We could try something. Uh, we use read line twice, so we can see if extracting a variable would improve our score. So we are at 50 now. Uh, I'm gonna declare like r equals read line. Just three characters by extracting this variable. Nice, so you're aliasing read line yeah. as another variable. Yeah. So you, when you type it twice, well, it's only one character that you have to type twice. Exactly. So there are n squared cells in total. We have c that are equal to 1, and we have n squared minus c uh, cells that are equal to 7. So we are going to multiply this number by 7 in our re re results. Readline doesn't take any, any parameters, so we can first get c when we call readline. Since uh, assignments are expressions, we can assign the first readline into c and do that expression when we call readline with the first parameter, which is not going to be used, because in JavaScript you can pass as many arguments as you want. That's the dirty one. That's the dirty one and to win one character. And what would you do if you saw someone uh, at work who does no, that in your career? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something we I don't want to see. We are at 40. I'm going to try to do this. So now so, we are saving the cost of I'm declaring sure. variables, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> nice. So by not using variables and changing the order of the expression, the variables in the expression, we just want like seven characters. And now I think we are... <laughs> I don't see anything to improve this. We are 33 and 100%, so it's always good. Good job. All right. Oh, that's another simple one. I hope I'll get a nice one. So you have a positive number X, and we have to count the number of bits in the binary representation that are one. So, well... Yeah, that's a pretty simple one. I'm not sure I'll get a lot out of it, but uh, maybe you can show me. The default provided code is uh, very short now. You've shown me we remove the comments, the white nice. space. We can remove uh, parsint as well. We can replace with that. That's already much shorter. Now, nice. uh, how do I solve that? I want to declare the result variable. It's going to be, uh, I'm going to declare a loop. So maybe a while. Uh, and then we're going to do if x modulo 2 is 1, then we're going to increase r and then every time we're gonna shift x to the right one bit and so that's gonna be basically divide by two every time and count the number of times that we have a one so we have an odd number maybe i can remove the spaces here i guess maybe remove that as well put all on the same line it's gonna be a bit dirty but okay um, i guess i don't have much more to to do here there's something that you can do which is always better than a while you can use a four exactly the same and this should work. That's useful to declare variables that you you can oh, initialize yeah. here. Nice. So you just earned like one character by moving the, the initial base here on the for loop. You can nice. remove the braces now. Even those braces, you don't need them anymore. We are at 49. So if I do this, uh, R++ is not going to be evalu evaluated. By using the, um, the end, the logical end, uh, we're going to, we just want two characters uh, by removing the if and the, the parentheses. And so why does it work? Because the logical end is, uh, is lazy. It's not going to evaluate the second part. If you have A and B, it's not going to evaluate B if A is false. Oh, nice. So, and even better, if we add X modulo 2 to R, it's oh, going to yeah. be the same. Because it's it's gonna be worth either one yeah, or it's zero, and zero so one, we can directly so add it. We can add it. We can also use the same trick as before and declare R directly in the read line to earn this new line at 44 right now. I don't see any 
any other way to improve this? Uh, submit. We try all test cases to make sure we are yeah. not submitting something that's not going to be a hundred percent. We end up with forty-four mm -hmm. characters, which uh, was pretty nice and much shorter than I expected, yeah. and much shorter than I, what I did uh, first. But uh, thank you for teaching me. Well, thank you, Valentin, for coming and uh, for teaching me a lot of stuff about JavaScript, which uh, I didn't know about. Uh, you're welcome. These were only uh, a few tips and tricks uh, that you can use in JavaScript to make your, uh, your code shortest and that you can use in code, in, in code golf in general. Next time, maybe I invite you to do some code golf in Python. Yeah, sure. <laughs> in the meantime, if you want to practice your code golfing skills in JavaScript, you can join a coding game. Uh, there's a, the Clash of Code platform where you can play with other players. Uh, it's in real time and uh, you have 15 minutes to do that kind of problems to get the shortest code as possible and win and get the highest ranking possible in the leaderboard.